Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Robert Cole, and I am the lead servant here at New Life in the Bronx Church. On behalf of the members of New Life in the Bronx, we would like to extend you a warm welcome as you come and join us in our time of worship and praise. And I would like to also encourage you to call a friend, contact a friend, and have them join you as you join us in this time of worship and praise. This week, we are celebrating one birthday, and that birthday is mine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thank you to everyone who, wish it, who will wish me a happy birthday, and I ask for your prayers. Please cover me with your prayers as I continue to serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. So let us come together and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings, New Life in the Bronx Fellowship. I have the honor of saying a prayer for us for this morning's service. Uh, I want to refer to a scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And it says this about God's faithfulness. It says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humankind. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, you will, uh, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in this season of uncertainty, uh, of even chaos, uh, we thank you that you are a God who is faithful to us in your promise to not tempt us beyond what we're able to endure. Uh, whatever temptations we face, you give us a way out, and for that we are grateful, Lord. Uh, the struggles we are going through, we pray that we would hold that close to our hearts, that you are with us, that you love us, and that you will not allow our temptations, our struggles, our uncertainty to overwhelm us. And so we thank you for your goodness, your love, and the fact that you stand with us even in the most difficult of times. We thank you in your son's name. Amen. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Hallelujah. I just, I'm so grateful for that verse. Because even when I feel down or I don't know if things are going to go the way that I had planned, God says to look up. And there he is. He's working on things. Trust in him. Where are you now? When darkness seems to win Where are you now When the world is crumbling Oh, I, I, I hear you say I hear you say Look up, child
again. You're not threatened by the war, you're not shaken by the storm, I know. You're in control, even in our suffering, even when it can't be seen, I know. You're in control. goodness it's running after us it's not just kind of like saying it's not just kind of following along but it, it actually runs after it says in Psalm 23 that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I see God running after me trying to bring goodness into my life and I love this song for that reason I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up till I lay my the goodness of God.
Till I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness Of God All my life You have been faithful All my life You have been so So good With every breath That I am able I will of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. As a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. sing a little in Spanish, and then we will sing in Eng the same song in English. The song is called Grande Fuerte. It's written by my good friend, Imer Santiago. Mi socorro Mi sustento Mi Before 
es grande fuerte todopoderoso santo puro el cielo lo adora digno es el de toda la gloria y adoración nuestro Dios es grande Poderoso, santo, puro, el cielo lo adora, digno es el de toda la gloria y adoración. My helper, yes, you are Lord. My sustainer.
Praise God. Praise God. I would like to thank our Reverend Orlando Crespo and his wife, Sister Maritza Crespo, for leading us in that time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Uh, also would like to take a moment to thank a very special brother who is not part of our congregation technically, but in my eyes, he's a strong brother in the Lord, so he is with us. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Wayne Jackson for his technical support over all these many months that we've been uh, on the air doing YouTube videos. Uh, thank you, Brother Wayne. Uh, your technical expertise is greatly appreciated. And if you really want somebody who's good, who knows their technical, uh, who could give you rather some good technical advice, then you want our brother Wayne Jackson. So thank you, Brother Wayne. We appreciate you, and may the good Lord continue to bless you and your lovely family as you continue to study the Word of God. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to continue right now in our, our studies of Romans. We are in chapter 8. And so uh, in Romans 8, we learn that God is good. Amen. First thing we should, and first and foremost, we should learn when we open and study God's word is that he is good. Amen. And he is our ultimate good, which changes the way we live life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, we will speak about the role the Holy Spirit serves in helping the believer to deal with life here in a sinful world. How many of you know it's not always easy to live in a sinful world? Hallelujah. But we thank God for giving us the Holy Spirit to lead us on. So today we want to take a moment to take to look at and study not totally how the Holy Spirit, not, not everything the Holy Spirit does, but we want to look at what the Holy Spirit does uh, in the scriptures that we are going to read today. In a sinful world, we learn the truth that not every aspect of the believer's life will go smoothly. We learn that on earth, there will be sickness that impacts the believer, strife and hardship that challenges the believer's faith. Our loved ones will perish in the physical, and the sinful nature will run rampant in the lives of those who do not keep their eyes on the Lord. There will be times when it will seem that the challenges on earth overpower us, overwhelm us, causing us to question, even if for a short period of time, doubt that if God can or will keep his promises. That little bit of doubt continues to gnaw at us while we are here in a sinful world. But the Bible says, amen, I love that term, especially when we talk about the things uh, of this world, we, when we can say, but the Bible says. Would you say that with me? But the Bible says that when Jesus defeated Satan, and was victorious over the power of sin, that before he ascended into heaven, Christ reminded his disciples, and it's recorded in John chapter 14, verse 16, that I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Amen. This advocate has come to us and is seeking to fill us as we surrender our lives to him, helping us in our weaknesses so that 
we will continue to grow and move forward in our spiritual lives in Jesus' mighty name. Today, we will focus on the promise that the Word gives to us, the promise of the Word of God that reminds us that in our weakness, the Spirit helps us to live in our new position in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I would like to ask you to join with me as we continue our, uh, our study of God's Word, written in the Holy Bible, found in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 28. But before we read the word, would you join me in a time of prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we come in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that you would speak to us. Give us ears, Lord, to, un to hear, and give us a mind, Lord, to understand. Father, help us to not just be hearers of your word, but to become doers of your word. Father, help us to understand and process your word and your teachings so that we might glorify your name through our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask these things. And the congregation said with me, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles, if you would, with me to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8. You should be familiar with that by now. We've, we've spent a couple of weeks in it because it is such a rich uh, and, and full passage. It's such a rich chapter that, that uh, to try to get it all in in one sermon, oh my goodness, it would explode my head. It's just too much. So we are taking our time. Amen. So would you open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, where we, we will begin with the 26th verse and read until the 28th verse. Start with me in verse 26, please. The Word of God reads, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And this is such a famous uh, uh, verse that so many people know. And we know that in all things, God works for good for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. May your word uplift us today in Jesus' mighty name. As we continue our study of Romans chapter 8, let us begin by looking at verse 26, which states, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Once again, here we're looking at the Holy Spirit's role in helping us work through the hardships and sufferings we experience in this life here on earth as we patiently, okay? It does that as we patiently wait for God's promised glory that will be revealed in us who believe and have and have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord. And you can find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. In the same way, the Spirit helps us. Amen? Praise God. Remembering that we are not just looking at verse 26, but we are looking at chapter 8 in its totality today. As such, the Spirit helps us in the same way as he did in Romans 8, Verse 2, when he set us free, amen, set us free from the law of sin and death, meaning that the Spirit, through Jesus Christ, sets us free from the power of sin that results in death. For the wages of sin, the Bible tells us, is death, but the gift of God is life that comes through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 
Jesus sets us free, bringing salvation to the one who believes in him. As the Bible says, it is by grace that you have been saved, it, and this is not of yourself. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one should boast. Amen. And you can find that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit lives in the believer, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Uh, uh, the, the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in the believer brings us, uh, 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 let me repeat that, I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit that lives in the believer brings us out of the realm, which means the world, okay? Out of the realm of the flesh. The same flesh that cannot please God and leads us to death. And death here means a, a eternal separation, eternal separation from God. So the Spirit brings us out of the law of sin and death and brings us into the realm of uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, amen, that gives life, uh, which means that he brings the believer back into an eternal relationship with God because of the righteousness won by Christ. Note here that the Holy Spirit is not negating the role of Christ in salvation. Uh, sometimes when I explain things, uh, people can hear something different. So I want to make sure that we understand that the Holy Spirit is not taking Christ's role. Amen? Uh, Christ saved us through his death and resurrection. Amen. The Holy Spirit empowers us to continue walking in the way of the Lord. So let us look at Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 11. Turn with that in your Bible. Uh, that says, and if the spirit of him, that being God, who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, that being you. He, God, who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Holy Spirit or because of his Holy Spirit who lives in you. Amen? Because of his Holy Spirit. There is a distinct, Jesus does not, the Holy Spirit does not take Jesus' place. But because the Holy Spirit lives in you, uh, he's able to raise, uh, give life to your mortal bodies. Amen? Hallelujah. Although we are not discounting the role of Christ as Christians, we acknowledge that we cannot live without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Sometimes we do leave the Holy Spirit off to the side, but we cannot live without the Holy Spirit. And God makes sure that his Holy Spirit is understood and, and that we have a chance to see how his Holy Spirit uh, works in, in our lives as we walk here on earth. So today I am focused on the power of the, uh, on the power of the Holy Spirit to carry us through difficult times in this life. Uh, rather, another way to say that, I'm looking at the Holy Spirit uh, who helps us in our weakness. Amen? By surrendering to the Holy Spirit, asking him to come fully engaged in your life, we, where he, rather, where he leads all aspects of your life. That's what it means. Where the Holy Spirit leads all aspects of your life. You surrender your will and let his will be done in your life. So where all aspects, where we surrender and, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead all aspects of our life, you put to death an end to the misdeeds of the body. So you live in righteousness with God. Amen. The Holy Spirit also 
testifies to our spirit that we are God's children, reminding us of our new position in God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit reminds us at all times that we are heirs of God. And how often, how often do we need to be reminded as we walk through each and every day of our lives? How often do we need to be reminded that we are heirs of God? Amen? That we have been adopted as sons, that we are heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ. We need to be reminded even when we're relaxed and everything seems to be going well. We need to be reminded, and that's the Holy Spirit's role. When we surrender to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reminds us that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, and that has an impact on how we live. I don't want to change topics, so let me not say this, but I mean, let me not go deep into this, but if we forget the Holy Spirit, then we will forget who we are. It's like trying to live your life and never looking at your reflection. You begin to forget what you look like. And so trying to live without the Holy Spirit uh, it's like trying to live your life never looking at your reflection. We begin to forget who we are, who we are, what Christ has won for us, who we are in Christ, what is our new position. And if you ever notice, I'll tell on myself, I won't tell on anyone else. If you notice, if you allow the Holy Spirit to slip out of your life, you begin to forget who you are in Christ, and your life is greatly impacted. But the moment you allow the Holy Spirit to come back in, he convicts you, and he shows you the way of righteousness. And there is a change in your life, an instant change in your life, and that's why Jesus gave us uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen? So the Holy Spirit reminds us at all times that we are heirs with God. It is his constant reminders that give us hope, the hope that we have in Christ, especially during times of suffering and hardship. So let's return back to Romans chapter 8, verse 26, uh, where the scripture informs us that in the same way, the same way as I just finished talking about, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Amen. He helps us. The Holy Spirit is your friend. The Holy Spirit is there to support your Christian walk. Please, in the name of Jesus, do not forget the Holy Spirit that he sent back to come and advocate for us and to show us and to walk with us and to lead us unto the path of righteousness. Amen, amen. The weakness, the weakness described here is not described specifically, but it is a general weakness so that it covers every aspect of our lives. So, so you, right now, God is not picking out a specific weakness. He's leaving it general. So that each and every one of us can, can, can uh, come to our, not even our own conclusion, but the Holy Spirit can convict us in the way that he needs to. Amen? The way he needs to convict us so that we grow. Remember, conviction brings us back to God. It's not condemnation. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, now you may say, oh, Pastor Rob, you're repeating this again. I will repeat it over and over and over because this is key theology that, that uh, God has given us through the Apostle Paul so that we can live through the power of the Holy Spirit, live his godly life. Amen? It's what we call sanctification in the Christian and Missionary Alliance, where God separates us from the power of sin and draws us 
closer to him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So it speaks to our physical sufferings, our emotional sufferings, and our spiritual sufferings. These sufferings continue to occur on earth because sin reigns on earth. Now, sin does not reign in, the Bible says, rather, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. But sin still reigns here on earth. We have the Holy Spirit to help us to not allow sin to reign in our mortal bodies. Amen. We can say no by the power that, of the Holy Spirit that is in us. We can say no in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To not allow sin to reign in our mortal bodies to, so that we may, that we will obey its evil desires. Amen. This is the victory that Christ has won for us. And this is the power that we receive when we allow the Holy Spirit to live in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The sin of the world results in sufferings that bring groans both to creation and in the lives of the believer. Suffering is Satan's attempt to distract us, distract us from God's love and his promised glory. Now, if you're so focused on the hardship you're going through, your situations, uh, there are so many things for us to worry about. Those of us who have jobs, uh, our jobs are not as secure as we may believe because of this economic downturn. But if we keep our eyes on these economic circumstances, our economic circumstances, we will take our eyes off God. And it is God who feeds the birds in the air, amen, who, who, who dresses the flowers on the ground, who also takes care of us. How much more does he take care of us? Hallelujah. So we have to understand that Satan attempts to distract us from God's love and from God's promises. But we know we can turn back and say, Nothing will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit, amen. Even though Satan does attempts, he continues to attempt to distract us. The Holy Spirit is Christ's promise that we are not alone. Amen. And as we walk by the Holy Spirit, we will continue to live a deeper, uh, uh, victorious life that came by Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we have seen in Romans chapter 8, the help that the Spirit gives us comes in many different ways. However, verse 26, the scripture focuses on the role of uh, a prayer warrior that the Holy Spirit plays in the life of the believer. Verse 26, Six states that we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the acknowledgement that in our weakness, in times of temptation or sufferings or hardships, we do not always know what to pray for. Hallelujah. There are uh, there may also be times when we don't know even how to pray. Everyone believes that, oh, you're a Christian, you know how to pray, you know how to come together, you got it all together. But there are times when the sufferings and the hardships are so great that we, we can't even pray. It is often during these times that uh, we don't look as if we have ourselves together because we are broken. And at times, we are feeling hopeless. Listen carefully. The pain of sin is greater than we are often willing to admit. As we try in our own strength to look like Christians, we make it seem that we're always supposed to smile and appear like we always have ourselves totally together. Many mistake uh, 
The scripture found in James chapter 1, 2, where it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet with trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Typically, a trial is not an occasion for joy. James is not suggesting that we pursue trials and, and, and court hardship. Neither are we to pretend that trials are enjoyable. Enjoyable to endure because trials are difficult and, and suffering is painful. The word count here uh, is a financial term and it means to evaluate. Count it all joy encourages believers to evaluate the ways they look at trials. We are to recognize that trials exist for a purpose. In Christ, trials produced good. In that they produce steadfastness. They teach us how to hold on. But no one is looking for a trial. But we know that when we endure and allow the Holy Spirit to carry us through the trial, that we have learned a valuable lesson. We rejoice in the lesson. We don't rejoice in the smile. I mean, in, in, in the suffering. Therefore, there are opportunities for expressing joy as it, as it helps us to look at the big picture that God uh, that God does good even in difficult times. Amen? That's where we rejoice. We don't rejoice that we're going into a trial. We rejoice that God is with us. Amen? So we're not walking around joking and laughing when, when, when others are coming after us and constantly attacking us. It is the right look to be concerned. But you have a peace that passes human understanding because you know that God uh, is, is going to carry you and God is going to keep you in his everlasting arms. Amen. And you will learn how to live steadfastly without giving, easily giving in in the name of Jesus. It is during this painful time when we don't know what to pray for that the Holy Spirit helps us by praying through us, interceding with word, wordless groans. Intercession relates to doing something on another's behalf. Therefore, when we pray, uh, if when we do not know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit goes to work with the Father on our behalf through wordless groans, signifying hardship. Those wordless groans signify hardship uh, that we're enduring. I, I like in, uh, when I need to remember what that wordless groan is. Uh, I remember when my father used to tear into me uh, for my disobedience. And whenever I got whipped, one time I got whipped so hard, it hurt so much. You know, like the comedian said, you, you open your mouth, you, but nothing comes out. You, you just, you're just writhing in pain and that you open your mouth, but that cry doesn't come out. Like, whoosh, you feel that belt against you, you just, ah, ah, ah. you can't make words. There's nothing you can think. All, you, all, all that's happening is the pain that comes through you. The Holy Spirit at that time comes along with us and he intercedes for us. Verse 27 notes that, that God, who searches the heart of believers, knows the mind of the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. The Spirit doesn't have to speak in words because God knows his mind. He said, knows the mind of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit intercedes and operates according with the will of God. You see, God the Father and God the Spirit are one. So the Holy Spirit doesn't have to turn around and explain things to the Father because his thoughts are that of the Father. 
God already knows what he's thinking. Because what he's thinking is the very exact same thing that God's thinking. Because when he operates, he operates only in accordance with the will of God. You see, we need to let the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, and, and the Holy Spirit will help us in our times of suffering. Therefore, we can surrender. <clears throat> Knowing that allows us to surrender and trust the Spirit, knowing that he moves according, uh, in, in accordance with the will of God. The Spirit will not pray disobediently to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry what the Spirit, we can trust the Holy Spirit. We can surrender our lives to the Holy Spirit because we don't have to worry what the Spirit is going to pray for. Amen. He will not lead you into unrighteousness. Therefore, although we may not know how to pray, we can pray trusting that the Holy Spirit will help us. So when we get in those times when suffering is so great, when the hardships are so much, too much for us to even uh, uh, put together coherent sentences, although we don't know how to pray, we can pray because the Holy Spirit is with us. When we give our lives to the Lord and we surrender to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit fills us, with, it, uh, uh, fills us, then we can trust God that even when we don't know how to pray or what to pray, we can pray. We can call out, we can cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that glorious? We can cry out, Abba, Father, because the Holy Spirit will intercede for us in accordance with God's will. Paul, so therefore, I'm, what I'm seeing here is that Paul continues to teach, <coughs> excuse me, can teach, continues to teach our dependency on God. That's what he's talking about, our dependency on God, his son, and his spirit, and how they continuously work on our behalf as we wait, amen, because this is what it's about, as we wait patiently for the glory he will reveal through us. Amen. Praise God. We can wait patiently. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as easel, I mean as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. And I like when the song goes, Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. That we ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach us to wait. Teach us to, to come alongside and, and to allow you to lead and, and to allow you to bring us alongside with you. The Holy Spirit will do it for you in Jesus' mighty name. So, having established his position, that Paul's position, that we are dependent on God, Paul comes to verse 28 and states, and we know that in all things, amen, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Just like the Holy Spirit operates in accordance with God's purpose and God's plan, then God works for the good of those who have been called to live, to operate in accordance with with his purpose, his plan for your life. Amen. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show us the plan. He will show us the way. The Holy Spirit will lead us through the plan that God has for our lives. Amen. Praise God. Notice Paul highlights that this, uh, that this verse indicates, Paul, Paul highlights that in this verse, it, it indicates that in all things, not some things, in all things, God works for the good. Now, if you're really critically thinking, you're going to say, but you know, Pastor Rob, I went to my sick relative. I stayed there. I called to the Lord. And my relative never got well. And they passed on from this life. So what are you talking about all things? 
And for those who ask that question, I want to spend some time to look at what it means. All things uh, uh, God works for good. All things includes the good times as well as those difficult times. This verse is just like the others in Romans, uh, ever in Romans 8, reminds us that God is not just the God during the good times, but he is faithful through the difficult times as well. The verse also points out that God works out, works out, works out all things for the good. Because God is good. Now, all things he works out. The term works out does not mean it has to happen that moment. But God wants us to know that he is with us even as we sit on the deathbed of our loved ones. Because our loved ones pass on from this life until the next does not mean God is not working good. I want you to know this. Although God works all things towards good, not all things are good. Let me say that again. Although God works all things towards good, not all things that happen to us are good. We need to understand that there are times in our lives where we will experience times of suffering and hardship. But with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we will with uh, we live with the understanding that God works all things out for good because God is good. This understanding provides the believer with a deep level of comfort that even though we lose loved ones, we can trust by the power of the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us and that does the will of God, we can trust that our good God, our good God will do good in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you some examples in a little while to help you understand that. Uh, this understanding provides that the believer, or rather provides the believer a deep level of comfort, allowing the believer to keep their focus on the promise hope before him or her, okay? Here, uh, here, here, here goes the practical example I want to share with you uh, in, in Romans 8, verse 16, which says, I consider that our present sufferings, you understand? Our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. You see, what we go through now cannot compare with what God has for us. Now, uh, let me say this. In spite of our circumstances, our eyes remain on the prize, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. As believers, we continue to need the Spirit of God to move us through the storms because God uses bad things for good but he does not now watch this one God uses bad things for good bad circumstances he uses for good but he does not make bad things good are you getting that understanding he uses bad things to make good but he doesn't make the bad circumstances, the bad situation, good. It is bad. It hurts. Suffering is not good. It is bad. But God uses the sufferings of the world to teach us to steadfast. fast. That is good. To stand fast is good. 
But when you're going through that suffering, I don't think anybody's going to turn around and say, yeah, this is good. This is good. I need some more of this. Particularly when the suffering is so close to home. But as believers, we know God is good all the time. And as they say, all the time, God is good. We know that God works towards the good, even though our situation is very bad. Let me give you another example. In Genesis, we learn the story of Joseph, who experienced one hardship after another at the hands of his brothers. Being enslaved was not something Joseph enjoyed or looked forward to. But as he continued to grow in the Holy Spirit, we notice uh, his attitude was calmer than we would have expected it to be. In the story, we learn that God is able to save his people, Israel, as a result of the sufferings Joseph encountered. You see, Joseph's situation was bad. When part of his wife accused him, that was bad. When he was down in the dungeon and he asked uh, uh, the baker, and uh, right now I'm drawing a blank, but the baker and his partner to speak for him, it was bad. But even in bad situations, God works it out, works towards the good. So we see when in chapter 50, uh, uh, watch this, in chapter 50, how he responds to his brothers. When in verse 20 of chapter 50, Joseph says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Here we see God use the suffering of others for his goal, his good goals. Amen. If you believe God is good, then you are, then you know that he is working in you. Good. He is working through your situation. Good to come out of it. Are you ready to surrender your life to the Lord? Are you ready to begin living in the comfort and security that he has given us through the power of the Holy Spirit? You know, Jesus' is, Jesus is death. Jesus had to die so that we might be saved. There were those who told him, come down. Peter said, you shouldn't have to suffer. What are you talking about? You're the Lord. But the, Jesus set the example of suffering, even suffering unto death now. And because of his death, we have a chance to live the free life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We must remember that not all people get up from the sickbed. And this is not an excuse. Or from harmful situations. But in all situations as believers, we are called to pray and to keep our eyes on the Lord. And when we can't pray, guess what? Allow the Holy Spirit in us to pray. Trust the Holy Spirit with our prayers. Amen? Hallelujah. To keep our attitudes and keep our minds right and keep our eyes on the prize. We are all part of God's plan. Let us remember that, that we are all part of God's plan, regardless of whether our situations change now or at a time even we may never see. You see, uh, Moses knew that the Israelites would get to the other side, but he wouldn't go with them. Does that mean God didn't love them? No. It means that God had a plan, and Moses was willing to live with God's plan. Amen? The question it is, are you and I? For our hope is not a weak hope. It says, for we know. That's not a weak hope, but a confident hope. A confident hope, confidence that shows that we have a hope in the promises given in the word of God, that God works out all things, not some things. He works it out. It is a process. Sometimes it happens faster than others, but it is a process that God will work out 
all things in his time and by his way. For we know, speaks of the hope we have in God, that he orders the steps of the believers unto righteousness. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? That's the question. When we experience hardship, when we experience trials and tribulations, the question becomes, do you believe that God is leading you onto a path of righteousness? Let me finish today's text covering the last part of verse 28. The promise found in this verse is not a general statement. It is directed towards the believer who loves God and is called according to his purpose. Not our own purpose, but his purpose. Without a relationship with the Lord, you cannot receive God's promise of his glory. That is far greater than than the suffering with, uh, that we experience today. You see, we can't make this promise just to anybody. This promise can only be given to those who trust in the Lord. We can give the salvation message of hope to everyone, but we cannot say that God will work out for good for those who do not love him and do not live in accordance with his purpose. This promise is only for those who love and believe the Lord. This book, Romans, is focused on the believer, the believer who accepts Jesus as the Savior and Lord. Therefore, God is calling you. He's calling you to himself through the salvation given by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you allow Jesus to set you free? You who has not called on the name of the Lord, will you allow Jesus to set you free and allow God's Holy Spirit to lead you to the victory and freedom granted through everlasting life? I'm saying to anyone today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, to accept Jesus today, by reciting the sinner's prayer of salvation. Let Christ know that you have heard his message today. And today you accept him as, uh, uh, by faith as your Lord and Savior. So you can begin to surrender your life to him. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing in this spiritual world realm, this holy spiritual realm. Apart from Christ, we must live according to this world. So surrender your life to him. And as Christ was raised, so shall you be raised unto eternal life, which is life with God. You see, there is eternity for all. But the question becomes, will your eternity be with God or apart from God? With God is what we call heaven. Apart from God is what we call hell. You see, we will experience trials and tribulations on this earth. Because of sin, all people, believers as well as unbelievers, will suffer. But I tell you today, when you accept Jesus Christ, you become on the side of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And as we continue to surrender, let, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, what we call sanctification, the Holy Spirit will lead us unto the path of righteousness. And he will, uh, uh, although not stop all suffering and hardship on earth here, he will get us through. So the God who works out good for all who love and, and are called according to his name and according to his purpose, rather, he will keep us in his perfect peace. Accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. And if you have already accepted him, I want to encourage you to surrender. Surrender to his Holy Spirit. 
and allow his spirit to become, to rule and walk and lead. That's what I mean by rule, to lead you, to lead you unto the path of righteousness, to lead you away from the law of sin and death, and to lead you into the realm of the spirit, the Holy Spirit that gives life. I pray for you. I pray for each and every one of you that we would accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that we would follow God's way by following, allowing the Holy Spirit to live in us and through us and lead us. Because Christ has given, remember we started, we started today by saying, Christ said, I will ask the Father and he will send another advocate, another one who speaks on your behalf and leads you on the path of righteousness, which is on the path to God. May you receive this wonderful gift. For as the Bible says, the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life that comes through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will help you in your times of weakness. May God bless you and keep you. May, his, may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you.